Hello everyone, a blessed Easter to you. I hope your Easter was a good day. I'm sure it wasn't the Easter that any of us had imagined once, but hopefully our faith has been strengthened once again as we discover that the promises of God are true for each and every one of us. Did you know that there are readings appointed for a worship service for Easter evening? If not, you're not alone. It's one of the most frequently forgotten treasures of the church, at least in many traditions. What I like about the Easter evening service are the readings and the way they fall at the end of the day, at the close of the day. And I wanted to take just a couple minutes today and invite you to turn to those readings and join me in just some quiet reflections on what this day is and will always be for all the faithful. The readings for Easter evening begin with a reading from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 25, where Isaiah envisions a great feast on the mountaintop where the people, God, the tribes, and nations of the world gather, and God comes down. First of all, a feast would have been a very unusual experience for most folks at that time. But the mountain was also the symbol of God because the faithful would go up to God, turn their eyes toward heaven, and it was from the mountain <clears throat> that our strength and our God would come. And there on that mountain, God was going to do a remarkable thing, says the prophet, that God was going to come down and bestow life and redemption upon the people of God, even to the point of swallowing up death forever. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 5 where we hear Paul exhort us to live a life absence of malice and evil, and who doesn't have at least a little of that in their heart, and instead to celebrate the Easter feast with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. In each of these readings, the emphasis is on the astounding love and grace of God, a goodness that brings to us the capacity to save and to save the world. I think it's important for us to remember on Easter day of all days that this is still a world that God loves. And in God's eyes, all of it, everyone and everything is worth saving. Not surprisingly, it's Jesus who leaves us a bit of a roadmap for how this happens. The gospel for Easter evening is the lovely and beautiful story of the road to Emmaus which found in the 24th chapter of Luke, and I invite you to read it for yourself today or someday this week, and read it in the evening as the day is getting dimmer and darker and quieter. Do you know the story? It's about two men who are walking from Jerusalem to Emmaus on the first Easter day, and they don't know what to make of it all. Evidently, if they were not followers of Jesus, they knew enough about him, they knew the story, and they knew that everything had turned out wrong that instead of victory and triumph, there had been a cross and a crucifixion. And then most confoundingly of all, on this first day, this tomb was empty. They, like all of Jerusalem, were buzzing with the news. Some were probably alarmed, some were angry, some were disappointed, many were confused. You name it, it was all there. The two men don't recognize Jesus as he comes up alongside them. And so they begin to talk about the day's happening. And then Jesus explains it all to them in a new and very fresh way. So that when they reach their destination, they press upon Jesus to stay and spend the night with them. We have that beautiful line from evening prayer it comes from this gospel. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening and the day is almost over. Jesus goes in with them, and as they sit down to eat, he picks up the bread, he blesses it, and gives thanks for it, and hands it to them, and instantly they get it. They see Jesus in a new way. They are so excited. They jump up and race back to Jerusalem to tell the disciples what they've experienced. It's night, it's dark, there's no street lights. They're running along a rocky road. They're so excited they don't even seem to notice that Jesus has disappeared from them. They just go, they move, and they go and find the disciples.
As they are telling their story to the disciples, Jesus appears again. And the text says, again, not surprisingly, that everyone was startled and terrified. Well, who can blame them? I would be, and I'm sure you would have been as well. But Jesus speaks to them. He brings calm to them. He brings reassurance. He even has a snack with them and tells them to wait a little bit longer for the promised power of God to come upon them. This whole account is just so satisfying to me. It's calming. It's full of hope. Just when everybody thought the worst thing in the world had happened, Jesus appears bringing hope and bringing the conviction and assurance of a new day that will come. People of God, along with all else that we are feeling this day, let's remember to make room for hope. In the midst of our own confusion or anger or disappointment or frustration, or sadness, grief, all of it, we must have hope. If the world does not see hope through you and me, where will they see it? My hope and prayer for you this Easter season is that all our hearts and lives will be filled with the patient hope and the love of God, and that God may come and bring healing quickly to all of the suffering and all who serve them across our world. Yes, the Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. It makes a difference. Life is new and we will live again. Thank you for spending a little time with me this evening. God bless.